Hello, my friends. This week, I wanted to talk about something that has had a really, really big impact on my life, uh, a little bit more so recently. Because while we are in the midst of a global pandemic, I think we are also in a bit of a, a mental health revolution or awakening or... I don't know what this word is. And I know that a lot of stuff is coming up for a lot of people and we're taking a good hard look at how we take care of ourselves. And I know how hard that is to talk about and articulate, I really do. So um, I'm gonna try and uh, to make this a little bit easier to watch and, uh, and listen to, uh, I'm gonna insert some footage of a hike that I'm gonna go on, a little hike, because hikes are one of the many things that uh, were made harder by some of the things that I've been through. So. Let's go. Over a year ago, I was diagnosed with Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, or ARFID. ARFID. It sounds like a tiny dog. ARFID. And I was also diagnosed with Generalized Anxiety Disorder. This video is meant to be informational and anecdotal, to give you a quick picture of what these things are like for me, how they are linked, and what I have learned about my life by dealing with them. I've wanted to make this video forever because people who have shared their mental health journeys online in one way or another have really helped me, and I know how important those resources are. So I share this in hopes of being that resource for whoever needs it. Ever since I can remember, I have been a so-called picky eater. Many children go through a phase of picky eating, but I did not grow out of mine and it got worse. I consistently had extreme gag reactions to a lot of fruits and vegetables. The texture was usually what would get me, although sometimes the taste of sour would also set me off. And it was never just, I don't like this. It was, my body is afraid of this item. And any kind of consumption of it would lead to gagging, my esophagus feeling like it was spasming even after the offender had been expelled, and sometimes nausea. It essentially was a quick, physical panic reaction to certain foods. This got worse when, in my late teens, I developed some pretty serious allergies to yet other foods. Now, obviously, anything I am allergic to, I avoid. But with ARFID, I am constantly terrified that one of my allergy foods is somehow in what I am eating, even if it's not. So my perception of the danger of my allergies is super constant, and super intense. ARFID is actually often statistically coupled with serious allergies and or generalized anxiety disorder, so it all checks out, it's all connected. Speaking of generalized anxiety disorder, it's the same thought that's at the root of both of the issues. It's that I don't like this, I'm afraid thought that triggers both my ARFID and the physical symptoms of anxiety that I've experienced in my daily life which include really, really extreme tension in my throat and my jaw, restricted breathing, kind of like I have a belt around my ribcage, physical tremors, so like big full body shivers, uh, those suck, throwing up, sadly, not fun, a feeling of having a hot flash, and this one is weird because sometimes my face and my head and my neck and shoulders would feel like they were on fire for like a bit and then it would be gone, or I would just constantly kind of feel like I had a fever. There were many nights where I could only sleep with a cold, wet washcloth up against my chest or around my neck or on my forehead. My limbs would also feel like they weighed a thousand pounds each. And obviously, a pandemic made everything, all of these things, just worse. Some people with ARFID suffer from really severe nutritional deficiencies, which I have thankfully been able to navigate, but another way it's diagnosed is if it severely affects your quality of life. And that was where I noticed that something was seriously wrong. My thoughts were in a constant spiral of worry, especially around food. Ordering out or going out was terrifying. Traveling was very, very scary at times because I didn't have as much control over what I was eating and didn't necessarily feel safe. And obviously social situations were just kind of complicated when there was food involved. The thought of going on a long walk or a hike was scary because I didn't know whether I could have an allergic or panic reaction in the middle of it. I would get wildly, wildly paranoid about the health and safety of my family and friends. Driving was kind of scary. And I was just burning out everywhere in life, just fast. And here's the kicker. After an especially tough trip last year, I just out of frustration looked up my symptoms. And that was how I found out what ARFID was. And I legit was like, it's a thing? Like, I can receive treatment for this? I can get help? I genuinely thought that this was something I was just gonna have to deal with, that I would be choking on things and terrified of food for the rest of my life. But no, that wasn't the case because ARFID wasn't added to the DSM until 2013. So in all of my training on eating disorders in school, 
there was no information about it. It just, it hadn't been added yet. And still, specialized treatment is hard to find, but it is possible. And I also thought that I was just an anxious person and that it was something that defined me and was therefore a part of my life. And while yes, my brain is wired to worry, with treatment, I have already started to experience some really extraordinary relief from these physical symptoms that made me literally feel like I was sick. That's why they call it a mental illness. I was sick and I felt um, hijacked. Like my essence had been hijacked by something that just wasn't me. I know a lot of people are nervous about seeking out professional help and getting a diagnosis, but for me, getting a diagnosis was such a relief because suddenly it had a name and we had a plan. Side note, by the way, I see all of you, like the way I imagine you all is as like my little sister or my little brother. And I, I would never want to tell you things that would make you upset, but I always wanna be honest with you and I want to help you understand things that are, are bigger than both of us, um, like mental health. And so, you know, I, I want to be honest with you and say that mental health issues like ARFID and anxiety and, and many others take an extraordinary amount of emotional labor. It is so much work. Um, but there is a really wonderful quote, and it is, Not even nature can create a storm that lasts forever. And I like to look at my mental health that way. If there is anything that I have learned in the last year of treatment, it can be summed up in one word, and that is willingness. I have to be willing to experience new textures and new tastes, to willingly sit through my body and my mind being in pain in some ways as I experience new things. Resenting feeling scared only keeps me scared. In terms of the progress I have seen, I have conquered my fear of apples and watermelon and mango and sometimes strawberries, yeah, that depends on the day. I haven't had a really horrifying panic attack in several, several weeks now. We're still working on my ARFID, honestly. I'm not where I wanna be. Um, there are a lot more foods that I, I wish I could be more open to. The pandemic very much derailed everything, but we are back at it, we're working on it. And I'm just trying to surrender to this process. I trust myself. Not my thoughts, necessarily, the ones that instill fear and self-hatred in me. Because they're not me. They're my thoughts. I can look at them. I can hear them. I can see them. And so therefore they are not me. I trust myself. I've learned that by now. I know how to take care of myself. I have the physical and mental tools to regulate my emotions and really get curious about what it is that I'm feeling and to know when it's bad enough that I need to pick up the phone and I have to call someone right away, which there is no shame in doing. I still have days that are worse than others. I expect that to last for a while, but the force in me that has willingly endured so much pain and learned from it and so far has kept me safe by telling me when to seek help is the voice that I have learned to trust and always listen to. And that is enough to keep moving forward. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, please know that there is really good professional help always available. I will put resources down below. Please, please take care of yourselves. And I do not mean that in a facetious way. Life right now is super weird and super unstable, but it is in this kind of environment that we learn the most about our resilience. So if you are struggling, please reach out to someone you love and trust and or a licensed professional. Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful and informative, and uh, I will be back with some music next week.